Jumping in with the longbow. We're talking real time on the tabletop. 20, 40, 50 long range missiles per mech. That is a single mech. That's That's got some interesting bite. That's got some interesting alpha. And that's what we're looking to capitalize on this mech. Now, what's interesting with the longbow, it's an assault class mech, 85 tons. Uh, That's a little bit misleading in terms of armor, and we're going to footnote that for a moment. But what we see with the Assault Class mechs is now you have so much internal space. Now you have so much tonnage that you can not only take a variety of weapon systems and fulfill a variety of roles, but you can begin to really effectively leverage this idea of redundancy in Battletech. Think about your last game or your upcoming game. Uh, Battletech... The DNA behind the pieces, behind the rules, is this idea of modifiers. I'm trying to bring the modifiers down. Range, movement, target. So when I shoot, I need, what, six, eights, maybe tens to hit you. You're trying to jack those modifiers up with range, movement, terrain, specifics. So this way, I need 11s and 12s to hit you. So this constant push back and forth. And I can control only so much with the modifiers. That's before we get in for the random of the dice. We break through with redundancy, having multiples of the same weapon system. Um, we see this with a brace of medium lasers. We were looking at the T-bolt yesterday or by having weapons in a similar range bracket, PPCs and long range missiles. Redundancy is where you have multiples. So if I'm going to connect with you or try to connect at a distance, I have two or three shots that I can take. Yes, we have to look at heat or manage heat. Heavy, and especially assault class mechs, they have the tonnage to be able to mount redundancy, but at multiple ranges. So we see these mechs really carrying a tremendous amount of firepower combined with armor. Well, they're assault mechs. The longbow kind of goes in the extreme opposite direction. It it takes that tonnage utilizes redundancy, and throws it all into one specific role. I classify these mechs as support mechs, meaning you are not running into the fray. They they don't want to get close to things. They don't want to attract attention. They want to kind of be on the side or be at a good spot and add support to your lance, your vehicles, your other units moving in. So with the longbow, we've got the redundancy, we've got the support. Intersphere tech, the long-range missiles... It's, it's pretty fearsome. It's got the two 20 packs. We explored this idea of 15s and 20s we want on the heavier machines, especially with redundancy, because on the chart, when I roll for the clusters, if I roll average, that's got some good soak. If the dice gods are with me and I roll legendary, uh, that's just going to be absolutely brutal. And that's two of these plus the fives. So pushing that out. Now in this roll of having the redundancy and having so many, this now opens up the longbow. And we're just talking about one. I mean, you could take multiples. You can take other things to complement it. We're just exploring one for the battle value. You have a very, very potent and interesting indirect fire machine. Um, If you're new to battle tech, the intersphere tech with the long-range missiles, you can shoot them directly at a target if you have visual line of sight. But if you have a spotter, you can kind of call in Uh, The idea, the short-range missiles, like, shoot straight out. The long-range missiles kind of arc over. So this way, you could potentially indirectly fire and have them land. That gets very, very interesting, where if you have a grasshopper, if you have the Thunderbolt, where they have fives and 15 packs, they only have one. I mean, anything can indirect with the long-range missiles. Okay, I'll take it if I have a spotter. But now, with a longbow being dedicated that opens up the possibility for sustained indirect fire soaking you every turn, either by opportunity, because maybe I'm advancing and you're hidden, or by design, if I can get to a good place on the hex map behind elevation, you can't see me. I've got a spotter. Um, I'm just going to be blasting every single turn. Okay, that sounds pretty awesome, right? And and one could say that I am really enthusiastic about lots and lots of long-range missiles. But there's drawbacks with specialized mechs, um, especially something like the longbow, where uh, you have so much of the tonnage taken up by the missile pods, the 20 packs, the five packs, but also the ammunition. That doesn't leave very much at 
all for armor. I mean, the first time you pull out the tech sheet and print it out, fire it off, you look at the arms. I mean, seriously, look at the arms. You're going to say, is there a misprint here? That, I mean, it doesn't have much armor at all for an assault class mech. The duality is if someone's really actively firing and engaging at close range with your longbow, we've got a problem. I mean, someone could try and indirect fire back. They could try to harass you with some light mechs. No one's just going to let you sit there and fire direct or indirect and not have some sort of coordinated response. But we need to be mindful of you don't have much armor and you are literally with all that ammo. If things go into internal, you are very vulnerable. So it's this duality of not a lot of armor plus just just I mean, the internal mechanisms of all those missiles feeding and cycling through and firing off. Uh, You go to internals, you hit ammo you're just going to absolutely explode. And we don't want to jettison that ammo. We don't want to get rid of it or take a lower load. I mean, sometimes you see this. Do you really need 200 rounds, machine gun rounds in that right arm? Like, like, no, maybe I need like enough for like five shots and I can cycle through that pretty quick. So if it goes to internals, I'm fine. But uh, we see this with auto cannon support and uh, especially with the longbow fire support mechs, I want all the ammo I can carry because I don't want to run dry halfway through the battle. And I'm going to be firing every turn, direct or indirect. If things do get close, uh, we do have the two medium lasers. This is a little bit misleading because you feel like, well, I'm an assault class mech. Um, as someone closes, if they're engaging with me, I could hit them at least with two or three shots with the long range missiles before they close enough that now I have the firing modifiers, the penalties, because we're under the minimum with the missiles, and I've got two medium lasers. I mean, I've got redundancy there. It's not bad. I have enough heat sinks that I can fire it. Other than driving off some light mechs, or maybe, maybe, depends on the medium mech, that I can engage. Heavies and assaults, mix it in with a longbow, you're not going to last very long at all. So think of the medium lasers as not as something you're going to use, but as something that like something went kind of wrong and I'm backpedaling and I'm trying to get out of there and something's in under the minimums and I need to disengage and free myself really, really fast. So let's talk about really maximizing that indirect role. You're going to need a spotter for this mech, something that can spot, provide the indirect. This could be built in as part of a lance. Um, or for very, very minimum battle value to have a dedicated spotter. Uh, Hover units are a great great way to buy in. Uh, They also have the ability to engage. You could utilize a Karnov. You could utilize a warrior. Um, Something that is either extremely, I mean, you can use anything. I could use um, a medium mech as part of a lance moving forward as a spotter. But generally for a dedicated spotter, we want something that can zip fast like Hover. Could do a locust. I often run a locust for the spotter. Or we want to run uh, something that has complete elevation, like a warrior, VTOL, or a Karnoff that can kind of get that bird's eye view, call it in, fire the missiles. So a very, very potent, potent, dedicated, dedicated mech. You're going to squeeze out as much alpha as you can. But being literally all in on that one roll, if your opponent is able to engage you, or you don't have a unit that can block or intercept if they move in a unit. Um, I often will combine the longbow with a T-bolt, and this way if something kind of moves in, the T-bolt can block it, buy more time for the longbow to keep on firing, but also redeploy, get out of there. You need other elements. You absolutely need other elements. This is not a solo mech. I mean, you could go solo with a T-bolt. You could go solo with an awesome. You could go solo with a battle master. Not advised. I always want support. You always want support in battle tech, but you can do it. Longbow, you can't even do that unless it's a, a light mech. But honestly, if there's initiative, other units on the table to activate initiative, um, I wouldn't want to face a Jenner. With a longbow, that Jenner, if they're willing to push the heat, get rear armor, uh, very, very, very dangerous. I'm never going to be able to shake free and effectively fire the LRMs on, you know, a two or three hex away Jenner. I've got the lasers to drive it off. Certain things can be very, very problematic. Uh, We need to make sure the longbow does not come to that. 